You won't believe what I just discovered. Hmm. Sit down. I can't. Susan's waiting for us. What's this all about, anyway? Wait. No time to explain. Come on, Doc. You've got to see this. I wish you'd start making your discoveries in the daytime for a change. You're always bugging me at all hours of the night. <laughs> It's too important, Doc. Come on. Doc, I was hoping you could come. Is this going to take long? Just get in here, would you? Mm. which I believe will confirm all the legends we've ever heard about this place. How much farther do we have to go? We're almost there, Doc. your men fighting with some large animal. A dinosaur. Exactly right. But dinosaurs were extinct before man ever appeared. That's what we've always thought. But this is proof positive that at least some survived all the way into the age of man. One hell of a big ball of fire just hit somewhere in the vicinity of the lake. I don't know what it is, but I think you better notify the Division of Forestry. 10-4, Steve. Uh, we'll get right on it. 10-4. What was that? Get out! Get out! <laughs> calling. Uh, go ahead, Unit 4. Sorry to wake you up, Jesse, but I was getting a little concerned about that requisition I sent you about a month ago. Sorry about that, Steve, but uh, you're not exactly just around the corner, old buddy. Copter's in dry dock right now with a bad case of the hiccups. We'll get her back on the line and get it up to you by next week, okay? 10 for it, Jess. Not that you guys ever need me for anything, but uh, I'm going to be 10-7 at the Pine Grove Cafe for a while. 10-4. Catch you later.
Morning, Dora. Hey, fill that up for me, will you? Give me a cup, please. Hey, Steve. Hi, Doc. Come on over. How you doing? Pretty good. You had your breakfast. Uh-huh. First time I've seen you out of uniform in weeks. Did you finally take a day off? Uh, no such luck. Promised Dan and Susan I'd take them out of my boat. Uh, they're gonna dive down and try to locate that meteor. Doc? Yeah, please. Say what? That's good, that's good. Thanks. Uh -huh. Seems like a lot of trouble for a hunk of rock. <laughs> to a paleontologist, it's better than finding a pot of gold at the end of a rainbow. Well, personally, I wish you to pick someplace else to come down. Just be glad it landed where it did. But if it had come down in the woods, we'd have had one hell of a forest fire around here. Oh, that's true. Did you actually see it? Oh, did I? I was over on the east rim of the lake. For a minute, I thought a 747 had crashed. <laughs> hmm. Gotta run, Doc. Hey, why don't you come with me? Oh, no, no, no. Come on, you never do anything anyway. Okay. <laughs> Here's the coffee. Thanks, nice, you boy. Thank you. Bye-bye, honey. Bye-bye, Don. Hi, Steve. Morning. Hi, Dan. Hi, Dan. There we go, Dan. Atta boy. Yeah. Dan, you really think there's anything left there, Rock? Now, this meteor is important to them, Steve. I'm worried about the cave. The university could withdraw its support. You really think they'd close us down with such an important discovery at stake? Well, not if they realize what a field day for science this has been. Two rare finds in 24 hours. That should satisfy the foundation for months. I'm just glad nobody got hurt last night, that's yeah. all. Come on, let's uh, go, huh? Doc, we're off the call line, would you please? Yeah. work our way to it from here. Doc, can you give me a hand? Yeah. Doc, though, has a pretty unusual occurrence. Usually meteors break up in the Earth's atmosphere, with very few fragments surviving, if anything at all. What do you estimate the depth here? Between 40 and 60 feet. We should be down about 15 minutes. Okay. market. You'll have to come over some night. Bass, trout, name your poison. Speaking of poison, Dan looks like he swallowed some. Yeah, he's still pretty upset about last night. You see, he uncovered some old cave drawings, and I'm afraid this meteor robbed him of his discovery. But he still has to try to get back into the cave. It's too damned important not to. Why didn't he just give up? Dedication. Almost every museum in the country has one of his artifacts. 
I know he may seem a bit zealous, but he has reason to be. Well, I, I still can't figure what Susan sees in him. Apparently a great deal. Their work is important. And if they can get back into that cave and salvage what I saw last night, the scientific community is going to have a lot of theories to change. How so? Well, Steve, I think Dan would rather enjoy telling you about that himself. There they are. It's right below us, about 50 feet down and still hotter than hell. Water must be 90 degrees all over this area. Nearly roasted in these wetsuits. What now? All we can do is let it cool off. Could be weeks before we can get it out of the lake. Sheriff's Office, Hanson. You saw what? Where did you see it? In the lake. I'm sure there's some logical explanation. Why don't you leave me your name and a number where I can reach you, and uh, I'll look into it, and I'll get back to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got it. Yes, yes. Right. Thank you for calling. Goodbye. Next will be little green men. Sheriff's 
sheriff's office, Hanson. Mr. Ferguson, how are you, sir? What? How many head? I'll be right over. Yes, sir. Goodbye. <laughs> You can take a look around, but I don't know what you're going to find. I've looked everywhere. That bull just ain't anywhere on this ranch. You say you're in town when it happened? Well, it had to have happened then, Steve. I'd have heard him if it happened while I was here. I mean, that bull would have put up a hell of a fuss if anybody tried to get him out of here. Is that all that's missing is the bull? Is that all? Do you have any idea what I paid for that bull? You figure maybe it, uh, it could be rustlers? Well, it could be. I'll put a call into Crescent City and have him keep an eye on the road leading down off the mountain. But as you and the Cattlemen's Association know, Mr. Ferguson, uh, rustling's still a problem in some parts of the country, but I can't figure why anybody would come all the way up here just to steal your bull. Well, I hope you can help me out. Take it or leave it. But as you can see, our competition ain't doing much business today. I'll take it. Thank you, thank you. Hey, Mitt, shake a leg. We just rented us a boat. Now, this little baby right here is all set to go. She's the pick of the litter, mister. Many big stripers have been caught in this little baby. Yeah, one too many, if you ask me. But I don't seem to have too much choice. That's about the size of it. Kind of touchy, ain't he? Oh, you know them city fellas. Everything got to be just so-so. Probably one of those executive types likes to boss folks around. Hey, Arnie. How come you didn't tell that fella there ain't been a fish caught out of here in the past two months? Now, look, stupid. That dude's got more money than he's got pockets to put it in. I can spot him a mile off. And I know a couple of fellas are going to go broke unless they start renting some boats. He don't know the fish and ain't been worth a damn. He just figured it's a bad day if we don't say nothing. You starting to get the picture, dummy? Well, I don't like it, Arnie. It just don't seem right to me. Well, you just keep them boats in repair and let me do the thinking. Hey! Don't forget to have my boat back by 6 o'clock. Our, our boat.
that them motors fixed, you and me is going round and round. My arm's about ready to fall off. You see this oar? You're lucky I'm too pooped out to beat you over the head with it. Hey, Arnie. That fella sure has been gone a long time. Oh, he's so damn bullheaded, he'll probably stay out till dark. Besides, if he don't get in by six, it'll cost him an extra five bucks. Should have charged him double anyhow. What the hell time is it? She's right on 5.30 now. <laughs> 30 more minutes and that's extra beer for us tonight. Hey, get to work. We'll have to do everything around here. Oh, hell, when do you ever do anything? I'm tired. I'll fix the motors tomorrow. Hey, Arnie, look. Well, that's that boat we rented to that fellow this morning. Only it don't look like he's in it. Seems like an awful lot for just falling overboard, doesn't it? Sure does. What did Johnny Mitch have to say about this? Well, he said he spotted the boat just drifting. Went out to bring it in and... This. Yeah, Doc, can you figure it? Is this exactly where you found it? No sign of the man anywhere? That's the truth, Sheriff. She just come a-drifting in like a homing pigeon. The wind was coming from the east this afternoon, so there ain't no mystery about that. There she sits, just like we found her. You didn't see or hear anything? Sheriff, this one big lake, you could have gone over the side miles from here. Well, we better start a search of the lake. I'll go get my boat. I'll take you guys up here and prepare, all right? What do you figure happened to that fellow, Sheriff? I wish I knew. Well, there's one possible answer. A scalpel and can bleed quite badly. He could have fallen over the side, hit his head, and bled enough while trying to get back in. I'm sure of one thing, though. What's that, Doc? Our chances of finding him alive are not very good. Hey, we stayed up half the night looking for the guy. It's a big lake, Jesse. We'll keep looking. Sooner or later, he'll float up. All right. Talk to you later. Aaron, yeah, goodbye. I'm making about three hours to Vegas. Great. No, I... I'm just tired. Is that so? Come on, my love, out with it. What's wrong? I'm just thinking about our gig in Las Vegas. I hope you're not going to repeat the performance in Los Angeles. How is that? Yes, that. Coming on stage drunk. Ross, that's just not... Professional or what? healthy. I know, I know. I said I'd dry out and I meant it. I might be a bit moist for a while. But I'll do better. As a matter of fact, I've been doing some work on our act. Not the sword box. I won't do that when you're still drinking.
Yeah. What's this? Come on, don't don't quit on me now. Mighty fine sign painter. Do you know something? You sure can't spell worth a damn. I mean, look at that. Everybody knows Bate spelled B A T E. Hmm. Suppose anybody will notice. <laughs> like your thermostat's gone out. And you overheated your engine. I probably can't get to it for a couple of hours. Oh, no. Is there some place we can stay while we're waiting? There's not much going on in a place like this. There's a cafe up in Summit Grove. Of course, there's no way to get up there. My wife's got the truck. It's too damn far to walk. Why don't you walk down the lake? and rent yourself a boat. That lake's mighty pretty on a moon at night. Thanks, that uh, sounds like a good idea. Come on, darling, you heard what the man said. Thank you. Tonight's the night. I can feel it. I'm gonna ask Dora to dance. Oh, yeah. Sure is pretty, Arnie. Prettiest woman I ever saw. I see you got your dancing shoes on. I wouldn't miss this hoe down for nothing. You get that motor fixed? Oh, yeah, I fixed it, Arnie. Except, um... Uh, except uh, I can't figure out where this thing goes. Hmm. She still run? Oh, yeah. Now, nah, don't worry about it. Let's go to the dance. You better know what you're doing. Well, it's not my fault you see the dumb piece in the water. Well, you said it wasn't any good. Well, it started without it. Couldn't help if you can't start the motor. Well, it just better run when I take Dora out tonight. Hello. Might rent your boat for an hour or so. I wife for a cruise. Well, I don't know. Uh, give you $25. Arnie, I don't think it's a... $25? Mister, you just rented yourself a boat. What about Dora? Good. You know how to run it? Of course I do. Good.
all the dumb things to do. Dumb, dumb. The people are probably long gone by now. Got themselves a free boat ride into the park. You know, you know, if you don't shut your yap, I'm gonna bust you right in the chop. Always yapping at me like some ugly little dog. So smart, aren't you? Think you know it all. You always making fun of me. Well, you ain't got the brains of a clam. What? Why, you little shrimp? I'm gonna bust you wide open. Clam, eh? Ah! Arnie, what the hell's the matter with you? Look. Oh, Lord. It's that, it's that fellow we rented the boat to this morning. Or what's left of him. I want you two to go back to your cabin and stay there. And don't go out on the lake, do you understand? I'm gonna take this over to Doc, and I want you two where I know where you're at. You understand? Sure. Well, get the hell out of that water. Sure. shoot our breakfast to us with a cannon. Now, come on.
Speaking of Wallace, this is quite a change. Moonlight on a gorgeous lake. No manufactured illusions here. It's beautiful. So peaceful. Look at all the stars. I've never seen so many.
Left here. 475. Tax for the gov. Oh, hey, come on now. Third time this month. Can't you guys get a nice fat bank? sound crazy, but those wounds were made by some sort of teeth. Teeth? You saying a bear or a mountain lion got him? That's the crazy part about it. There are no animals that fit this pattern. I've never seen anything like it before. Are you sure he didn't just wash up and then somehow a bear got to him? I'm positive. Whatever it was, it was in the lake. In the lake? That's right. I took a sample of fluid from one of the wounds. Swarming with a type of bacteria that I've never seen before. Well, you're the doctor. What's it add up to? I don't know. You know, Doc, first it was Ferguson's cattle, and now this. What's going on in that lake? I wish I knew. I suggest that until we know what, exactly what we're up against, you notify everyone around here to stay off the lake. How long ago was it that that meteor came down? About six months ago. Why? You think there could be a connection? It's possible. Everything seems to have started around that time. Fishing's been bad. The animals, birds, we haven't seen any around the lake for weeks now. Whatever's in that lake, Steve, has been eating the fish. The wildlife, they sense something is wrong. That has to be it. I don't know. I'm sure it has something to do with that meteor. Steve, I think for the present, we should keep this to ourselves. All right. But you know, Doc, that's putting my neck out a country mile. I'll start notifying everyone around the lake, and I hope you're wrong. I hope so, too. Burned up my boat just after we got it in condition. Mister, you're going to pay through the nose for this. Hey, ease off, honey. I think you may be hurt. What happened? You people all right? Arnie, bring me that jug.
I can hardly wait to hear your explanation of this one. Honest, Sheriff, we don't know what happened. There's like that when we found them, huh, Mitch? Yeah, that's the truth, Steve. They was out of it. Couldn't even give us a hint. Mm -hmm. Whose boat were they in? It was my Our boat. boat. Did they steal it? Well, no, but then you must have rented it to them. Yeah, but, you know, evidently there was a total lack of communication between us the last time we spoke of boat. Mitch, look at me when I talk to you. So I'm going to say it to you one more time. I'm going to say it very carefully so you both understand me. Don't rent any boats. Don't go out on the lake. Don't go out on the dock. If I catch you within 10... Arnie, if I catch you within 10 feet of the shore, I'm going to send you off this mountain in handcuffs. Now, do you understand that? Sure, Steve. What you figure's happened, anyhow? If I knew what was going on around here, I wouldn't be standing here arguing with a couple of idiots. I'd be out on that lake taking care of it. Well, I ain't never seen him so steamed. We'd better cool it a while. Told you not to rent the boats out. Now you always know better, don't you? Dummy! Arnie, is that all you ever think about, the next drink? Nope. Sometimes I think about the one after the next. Look, we're up to our eyeballs in debt, and all you can ever think about is beer and wine. Arnie, we gotta do something, or we're gonna lose the boat business. Or hell, we ain't made enough money in the past couple of months to even pay the rent. Well, all this, this stuff happening. No, we'll be lucky if anybody ever rents a boat from us now. <laughs> Mom, this is serious. Uh. <sighs> Arnie, we gotta think of something. I've been stuffing my shoes with newspapers for so long, my feet know more about what's going on in my head. You heard what the man said. He gave us an official order to shut down. Close my boat. Take them out of the water. For our boats. Our boats. Anyhow, if you want to go and change his mind, you go right ahead. Meanwhile, I plan to get a lot drunk. Ah, uh, you're so good. Nope, I'm just drunk at present. Now, tomorrow I'll probably be hopeless. Things always look hopeless when I'm sober. So I think I'll just stay drunk. Idea. <laughs> Come on, you need a walk.
Oh, don't worry about it. I know where we're at. Home's that away. Now, wait a minute. Oh, just follow me. Sure, we're going in the right direction. I told you not to worry about it. Want a drink? Suppose been happening to all those people. I don't want to think about it. Well, what if something happens to us? You just cut that out. Hey, Arnie. I think I'm scared. What the hell do you mean you think you're scared? Well, what if there's something around the lake that eats people? Like what? Well, like some kind of monster. Monster? Woo! <laughs> 
Hello, Doc. Steve. Listen, I had the damnedest experience this afternoon. Some punk tried to turn me into a hood ornament. I haven't the slightest idea why, but that isn't the strange part. I ran him down to the lake, and we exchanged some fire, and I hit him and knocked him into the water. When I got over to where he went in, there was no trace of him. Just a very large pool of blood. That's right. You know, Doc, I'm about ready to believe there's something in what you've been telling me. I want to cover that lake with a fine-tooth comb, and I want to do it now. I know it's almost dark, but I need some answers, and I need them quick. Thanks, Doc. I'll be over as soon as I can. Right. Goodbye.
duck and thought, you won't believe it. I've never seen anything like it all my life. It's like a huge alligator, but it's got flippers instead of feet. Well, where was it? Down the east rim, near where we found Fuller's head. Christ, I'm shaking like a leaf. Take it easy. Take it easy. The thing almost ate me. Doc, get in the car. I need a witness, and you're it. Okay. Right here, Doc. Big as a house. Look at this. Holy cow. Whatever it was, it's apparently gone back into the lake. You think you might have hit it? Doc, I was in such a hurry to get away, I can't be certain of that. Steve, we're up against something here that goes against every natural law. You carry a camera in your car, don't you? Sure do. You better get it. Take some pictures of this. Okay. You be all right? Yeah, thanks. Okay, I'll be right back. Myself. Dan might. And he would know what made this impression. Well, we better find out quick. As I tell you, Doc, it made a hell of a big impression on me. Then I pumped five rounds in the most solid mirage I've ever seen. Tell me exactly what you did see. I was down by the lake, and I heard some noise, so I stopped the car to get out and take a look around. I walked down by the water, and this thing comes charging out of the lake at me. Had a long neck. Damn it, Dan, teeth and eyes is mostly what I saw. Easy, Steve. Easy. Feet, but... It had flippers. It were like feet, but not quite feet. It was sort of dragging itself across the ground like a seal. But it looked more like a lizard. Just how big would you say it was? Dan, I really didn't take time to measure it. It was 50, 60 feet long. Anyway, I emptied my revolver into it, but it didn't have any effect that I could see. It just kept coming at me. Dan, I've never been so afraid in all my life. If I hadn't made it back to my car when I did, I sure as hell wouldn't be here now. It's incredible, but what you've described to me sounds like an aquatic dinosaur. Dinosaur? Come on, would one of you mind telling me just what the hell we're up against? It looks like we're up against a living dinosaur. I found fossil remains of this type of creature right here around the lake. Doc, this is fantastic. Do you know what this means? Those cave drawings could be a true accounting of the existence of this type of creature during the time of early man. But your creature would have had to come from a fertile egg. Dan, I don't know what the connection is, but I think it has something to do with that meteorite that fell in the lake several months ago. That's what almost had me for dinner. Steve, this is so incredible. But, you know, down in the near freezing mud of the lake, there could have been a fertile lake. The meteorite crashed into the lake, warming the mud and water, creating a natural incubator. Dan, I think it's possible. A living plesiosaurus hatched from a dormant egg by some incredible freak accident. Well, whatever it is, it's a mess. Now, how are we going to kill it? Hey, wait a minute. Why do you have to kill it? 
Dan, the county coroner's asking some very touchy questions about Fuller. You know, the guy was a U.S. senator. They don't know what the hell he was doing up here. The next thing I'll have is the FBI knocking on my door. I got missing cattle, missing persons. My phone's been ringing off the hook. I've been quiet about this thing too long. I'm going to call in some outside help. Now, hold on, Steve. Let's think about this before we go off half-cocked. Uh, I believe we should keep a lid on it. Do you realize how many people we'd have up here once the word got out? Why, everybody in the state would be here. And then you'd really have a problem on your hands. He's right, Steve. We can't risk it. Well, what are we going to do, Doc? Walk up and ask it to hold still while we put a leash on it? Listen, we can clear the lake. This creature can't harm anyone if they stay a reasonable distance from the water. That'll give us a chance to figure out a way to capture it. Capture it? Are you out of your mind? You want to try and take this thing alive? Steve, this is a living creature from the prehistoric past. Do you realize the impact this would have on the scientific community? I don't give a damn about the scientific community. Well, I do, and you can't just kill it. It's too important to find. I don't believe I'm hearing this. We've got a monster on our hands eating everything and everyone in sight, and you want to try and take it alive. Look, Steve, I know you're thinking about the safety of the people. You bet I am, and rightly so. But Dan's right, too. We can ensure the safety of everyone and still keep alive a great scientific discovery. And just how do you plan on pulling that little trick off? Well, Susan, I don't know. We'll just have to figure out a way to contain it. Oh, that, that's terrific. I'll tell you what, I got a nice big fishbowl over at my place, and you're more than welcome to use that. A fishbowl? Container? What about Bass Bay? It's a natural container. High walls all around with just one narrow entrance leading in and out. Now, the creature has probably eaten all the available food in the lake. Well, I can name you a couple of things. It's already added to its menu. If we could just capture it inside. We could lure it in there with a couple of dead steers and then dynamite the entrance once it's in. You know, it might work. Steve, it's worth a try. Doc, just whose side are you on? All right. I'll give you 24 hours. Then I am going to call in some outside help because my first responsibility is to save human lives, not sea serpents. We'll get everybody together at the cafe and, Dan, you better hope I can keep a lid on it. <laughs> Folks, please, please, listen to me for a minute. Now, I know what you've heard so far today is rather difficult to believe. I wouldn't believe it myself if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. But Doc and Dan have got a plan to try and trap this thing. Trap it? You're going to let this thing set up housekeeping in the lake? I say kill it. Get rid of it right now. That's what we should do now, you hear?
God. But if you try to kill it, more lives are going to be lost in the process. Give Dan and I a chance. Now look. Give him more Let's hear what he has to say. This creature can only move short distances from the lake. All you people are perfectly safe. Now, just a minute. You folks are talking about killing the goose that laid the golden egg. Now, I may be wrong, but I ain't never heard of anybody what's got a for sure dinosaur in their own private swimming hole. Just think all them dollars folks would pay to see it. I say let the sheriff and Dan try to catch it. Arnie's right. This thing's already ruined our fishing business. It's only fair it helped put some money back in our pocket. Sir! Sir! Step aside, please. Step aside, please. Come on, let me through. Please, please. Let's get through, please. Ben, you all right? Nancy, my bag's in the car. Get it for me. Hurry. Here, doctor. What happened? Sure. There's some kind of monster, Donna. The ski lift. The likes I've never seen before. I think we better haul our butts out of here before our meal ticket gets shot. All right. Come on, Dan. Oh, Dan. What are we going to do? We've got to figure out a way to kill it. Hey, you can't do that. Well, that thing's worth a fortune. He's right. Steve, we can't allow it to be killed. You're crazy. All of you, stay put. Well, I don't know about you fellas, but I'm going to protect my interests. Artie, you damn fool! Get back here! For God's sake, use your head. You go out there, you're gonna get hurt. Steve, you just hold on. That there monster's a gold mine, and I ain't about to see it kill. You idiot! Can't you see nothing's gonna save it now? Either get in or get out of here. What have I got myself into? I'm getting the hell out of here.
Our boats, Arnie. Our boats. Damn you, Arnie. 